What are solvents? Solvents are liquids that can dissolve other substances without altering their chemical properties and people use products that contain solvents in their everyday life, not just in the workplace. Solvents are used industrially in a range of applications, from large automated production plants to small manual operations. They can present different challenges on safe handling, but in our well-researched and regulated industry, this is easily achieved. The SIA and ESSIG have produced this safety film to help guide you through the process of handling solvents safely. Though solvents are not dangerous when used properly, they can present a variety of hazards that need controlling to ensure safe handling at all times. The main hazards of certain solvents are their potential to catch fire or cause explosions, their potential impact on human health and the potential for danger to the environment. Before handling solvents, always consult the literature supplied and carry out an appropriate risk assessment for the operation. The safety data sheet will advise how to use solvents safely and provide exposure data to assist in performing risk assessments. Exposure scenarios will detail risk management measures and provide information on scaling where individual uses vary slightly from the published scenario. All of these risk areas can be effectively managed if you work in accordance with published health and safety information. It is therefore important that those working with solvents have this information, fully understand the potential risks and that companies ensure adequate control measures are put in place. Fire and explosions are the key hazards of most solvents. It is therefore vitally important to keep away all sources of ignition such as smoking, matches, lighters, hot surfaces, sparks and even mobile phones. Ensure that the areas where solvents are in use and there is the potential for vapours are separated from sources of ignition. Solvents are also volatile, flammable liquids and can form explosive mixtures with air. It is therefore important that metal containers are earthed to prevent static charge buildup, that vapours are minimised and ignition sources controlled. Incorrect handling can also present hazards to human health. The most likely routes of entry into the human body are by inhalation or direct contact with the skin. Short-term local exposure can cause skin irritation, whilst long-term exposure may result in conditions such as dermatitis. Breathing solvent vapours can make you less alert, causing possible headaches and dizziness, which may increase your chance of having an accident. Ingestion of solvent liquids should be avoided and good hygiene should be practiced, so prevention of any such exposure is therefore one of the key safe handling messages. Solvents can also present a hazard to the environment and all wastes, including materials and packaging, must be disposed of safely and in accordance with legislation. For example, small spillages can be absorbed using mats or inert granules, which should be disposed of safely using a registered waste contractor. Now that we are aware of the potential hazards, we need to know what we are dealing with in our own workplace. A well-regulated legal framework is in place to provide protection for both workers and the environment. There are many sources of information, such as up-to-date safety data sheets, to help you gain the knowledge needed to safely handle any solvent you work with. So make sure you know what is available. If anything is unclear, ask your supervisor and contact the approved supplier if more information is needed. Technical language may need further explanation and most reputable suppliers have their own experienced experts who are happy to assist with such matters. Taking appropriate precautions will help to ensure everyone's safety and risk assessments should always be carried out prior to handling. As a first principle, the adoption of good housekeeping practices and the maintenance of a tidy operating area will minimise the potential for exposure. To avoid inhalation, always make sure your operating environment has adequate ventilation and in many cases the simple expedience of working outside or opening windows can be adequate. When it is not, however, there may be a requirement for forced ventilation. Never enter confined spaces such as tanks, pits 
small rooms or vehicle compartments where there may be vapors, unless you have ensured that it is safe to do so by ventilating the space and testing the atmosphere, or unless special precautions are taken and site procedures are adhered to. We would now like to take you through some typical handling scenarios to demonstrate safe handling of solvents in practice. Initially, we'll look at the loading and discharge of a bulk tanker, which should be covered by detailed handling procedures. Note the HAZCHEM labels on the vehicle, which are codes that describe the hazards and emergency action procedures the driver must take in the event of an incident. You will see a number of safety features, for example, the tanker is earthed, the driver is wearing personal protective equipment, the area around the loading site is bunded to contain any accidental spillages. There's a safety shower and there is a master switch on the vehicle to eliminate sources of ignition. All operating equipment is checked before use to ensure full functionality, as well as the suitability and size of the proposed discharge tank. Once the loading and discharge has taken place, the hoses are either drained to a contained system or purged. Many solvents are handled in drums, IBCs or other containers and these too require the operator to be fully aware of the hazards. Always read the label to avoid fire, minimize exposure and avoid loss of containment. One of these specific risks when filling drums or IBCs is the increased generation of vapors as a result of splash filling. In turn, static charge may build up and together with the vapors, the risk of fire is increased. We recommend that filling takes place using a lance, whereby the solvent can slowly fill the container from the base, and metal drums and IBCs must be earthed to allow for static discharge. The use of respirators may be required with some solvents, and your safety data sheet should be consulted. The filling of IBCs and individual drums should be minimized in enclosed areas such as non-ventilated warehouses and if this operation is carried out regularly, the operator should review the contents of the risk assessment. It may be that some form of forced ventilation is required. When handling solvents on a small scale, such as in cans or bottles, the volumes are relatively small yet the risks remain significant and appropriate care must still be exercised. Even on a smaller scale, the use of personal protective equipment, including gloves and eye protection, is essential to maintain safe handling of solvents. Small volume operators often work in enclosed areas, and in this circumstance, particular attention needs to be given to good ventilation. Open the window, replace the lid on the container, or use the fire cabinet. Good safe handling is important along the whole supply chain and here at the SIA and ESSIG we're working hard within the industry to ensure all are fully informed of the hazards of solvents and have the information to enable them to operate safely and legally on their own sites. So what happens if something does go wrong? Your safety data sheet will give you advice on how to deal with most incidents, spillages, fires and personal exposure. Make sure that all operators understand this data and are aware of where they can find it. Solvents have a vital part to play in industry and in many ways enable us to have the products and resources that are fundamental to our daily lives. Some solvents are hazardous but are produced within a well-regulated industry that takes care of its operators and the environment. All information to enable you to work safely is available. Make sure you have it, read it, understand it and practice it. Thank you for watching this short presentation and if you need more information, please make use of our comprehensive websites.